Hey everyone, Zian over here from Nintendo Life, and today we are so happy to share with you our review of New Super Lucky's Tale on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this review was originally written by Chris Scullion for NintendoLife.com, but was reworked into this video by me. We all need games like New Super Lucky's Tale in our lives. You may not like to admit it because maybe you're some tough guy or you have a no-nonsense online persona that suggests that you have absolutely no time for such childish nonsense, but deep down, even if you don't realize it, you could do with this sort of happiness in your life because honestly, we all could. Originally releasing almost two years ago to the day, Super Lucky's Tale found itself burdened with a little more responsibility than it deserved, since it was the only new game to launch alongside the Xbox One X. A colorful platformer was never really going to be the demonstration of a super powerful 4K HDR console, and so it perhaps looked a little underwhelming for reasons not entirely its fault. But now it's time for Super Lucky's Tale to get a new coat of paint and a second chance on the Switch. And it's a really good thing too, because Nintendo's system is a far better fit for the game. One where its bold colors and lovingly designed but geometrically shaped environments can be recreated without too much impact on the original vision. And it's a vision you're probably going to want to get on board with if you're a fan of the good old days of PS2 era platformers. Although we'll briefly touch on the additions in the Switch port, for the majority of this review, we're going to go with the assumption that you haven't played the Xbox One version of the game, since the majority of our viewers probably haven't. In that case, allow us to get you up to speed. New Super Lucky's Tale tells the story of Lucky, a young fox who's been given the daunting task of protecting the Book of Ages from an evil cat called Jinx, who's trying to steal it. And the Book of Ages isn't just some particularly compelling novel either. It contains portals to entirely different worlds, so its safety is extremely important. The general aim is to play through each world's various stages and collect clovers, which are needed to help put the Book of Ages back together. For the most part, each stage has four clovers, each earned in a different way. You get one for simply finishing the stage, one for collecting 300 coins in the stage, one for finding the five letters that spell out lucky, and there's also a final hidden one tucked away in each level to be found somewhere. It's a relatively safe but simple way to ensure some replay value, as you aren't always likely to get all four clovers in your first playthrough of a stage. Controlling Lucky is generally a breeze. His moveset is fairly limited. He's got a useful double jump, a tail whip attack, a new slide move, and the ability to burrow under the ground, and that's pretty much about it. Now, it may not be the most diverse range of abilities, but it could be argued that that is a strength in a game like this. Nobody likes a platformer where your hero can do 20 different things, of which most are only called into play once or twice. Here, you can get a feel for Lucky's entire moveset pretty quickly, allowing you to focus on the far more important task of just enjoying the game. If you're of a certain age and remember the days of PS2 era platformers like Jack and Daxter or even Tie the Tasmanian Tiger, then we're confident that you're going to have a lot of fun here. And this isn't a game that's exactly light on plot. There are plenty of occasions where you'll stop and have a chat with various NPCs, which most of which are well written, but still has the presence of mind to not milk it either. There is an instance where one particular NPC just will not let you go. He's been caged up forever, and he just needs someone to talk to, apparently. We won't spoil it for you, but when you get there, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. But otherwise, the game knows you're here to run, jump, hit things, and collect stuff, and is more than happy to let you do that in its well-designed stages. And it's easy to want to do so, too. The game is a delight to look at, with colorful environments and fun character designs. And nowhere is this more evident than with Lucky himself. He's the living embodiment of happiness, and it's hard to think of a character in this gaming generation who's more immediately likable. And you want to see this little fox doing well because seeing his happy little face sparks the sort of joy that people get when they look at silly cat pictures or when I see a Shiba walking across the street. We bet that this is what it would have felt like to play that cheery N64 Conquer game before Rare scrapped it and made them all R-rated. 
As well as the main game, New Super Lucky's Tale also integrates the two DLC expansions that were released for the Xbox One version of the game. One of which, for example, is Guardian Trials, which is a series of more difficult stages designed to give players a final challenge. The latter is very much appreciated because one of the main criticisms you could level at New Super Lucky's Tale is that it isn't a particularly difficult game, even with those new levels added. Lucky's limited moveset may make things easy to get grips with initially, but it also doesn't provide the game with much scope to evolve beyond offering you slightly more difficult obstacles to navigate with your limited moveset. When it does deviate from the norm, the results are varied. We enjoyed the series of marble puzzles where Lucky's placed in a giant ball and you have to tilt the stage a bit like the infamous shrine in Breath of the Wild, but nowhere near as annoying. We had less fun, however, with the numerous sliding puzzles that appear from time to time, which start as a mere inconvenience and end up being a real pain in the end. There are a few other issues, though how much they'll matter depends kind of on your own personal tastes. The game looks gorgeous, but its performance isn't perfect. It hits a steady 30 frames per second for the most part, but there are dips here and there. Never really anything to affect your timing during platforming sections, but it's worth mentioning regardless because, well, the internet. It's also worth bringing up that the game is still relatively short, even with the DLC added. A standard playthrough can be done in around 6 to 8 hours, so this is a game that really requires you to want to collect all the clovers to really get that bang for your buck. In terms of other new additions, the most immediately useful is the improved camera. Most of the criticism leveled at the Xbox One version of the game boiled down to its terrible camera, which often provided awkward angles, particularly during certain boss fights. This time, it's been revamped completely, and we have to say, we didn't really have any issues with it at all during our Switch playthrough. And when the best thing you can say about a camera and a platformer is that you really didn't even think about it while you were playing, that's the sign of a good camera. You can also dress Lucky in a variety of outfits using the coins you collect in each level. These serve no purpose other than to make an already adorable character look even more appealing, and therefore, this feature gets our approval. Incidentally, the outfit feature was already added to the Xbox One version in one of its DLC packs, but there are roughly twice as many outfits to unlock in this new version. Ultimately, we had a lovely time playing through New Super Lucky's Tale again, owners of the Xbox One version may not feel the need to double dip. While there are some new stages in there, and some of the existing stages have been overhauled so dramatically they make the originals look poor in comparison, we can't say that's enough of a reason to revisit this world. Unless, of course, you're a massive fan of the game. With all that said, allowing us to return to our original point, this is a game we all need in our lives. In an era of service games, microtransactions, loot boxes, Twitch streaming, procedural generation, and an ever-increasing toxicity in the online gaming community, it's such a beautifully welcome detox to play a game that keeps things simple. It's offline. Here are the levels. Here's what you collect. And here are some fun little outfits to unlock throughout the gameplay. Have fun and forget about life for a few hours. At the risk of sounding too serious in a review of a platformer starring a cute, cuddly fox, our hobby is becoming more complicated and stressful at an alarming rate, requiring us to invest more of our money, our time, and our mental capacity with every passing month. Games like New Super Lucky's Tale and the recent Ukulele and the Impossible Lair are the antidotes to this. The games that ditch the ever-growing play now and unlock this within a week or you'll miss out forever pressure of modern games and give us nothing more than colors and smiles. And honestly, we all need that from time to time. New Super Lucky's Tale is a solid reimagining of an underrated platformer with a greatly improved camera. It's a little on the short side, and may not provide much of a challenge to more hardened gamers. And if you already owned it on Xbox One, there really isn't enough new here to warrant a second purchase. But what makes it worth a look is its uncanny ability to make you smile. And this is something that can't be overlooked, especially in modern times. We here at Nintendo Life give New Super Lucky's Tale on the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you'd like to read our full written review on the game, or even just find out more info about Lucky, you can find that along with our exclusive gameplay session with some of the developers over at NintendoLife.com.